And now I'm very excited to welcome to the show for the first time an NFL and football contest guru in Mr. Las Vegas Chris. You can follow him on Twitter at Las Vegas Chris. Chris, man, thanks for finally coming on the show. How's the summer been treating you? It's hot. It's hot. Uh, it's tough. It, it's tough to drive a convertible when it's 117, but uh, uh, somehow uh, I'm making it. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be on your show. And uh, uh, we've been uh, basically pen pals on DM for I don't know how long. And uh, we've today's the first time we've actually spoken. So uh, very nice. Long time, man. And, you know, finally, we have something up your alley here because the NBA is starting to fizzle out a little bit. Golf's running hot, but we also have NFL coming up, and that is what you are exceptional in. And I got to tell you, Chris, I almost wore a Hawaiian shirt today to uh, try to match up with you a little bit. Uh, the good news is that I outgrew them, okay? So <laughs> so people don't have to put up with that. But I like to be on the same mindset as some of my guests here. So uh, I know that's one of your trademarks. You look, you look fantastic. <laughs> so it's just... You know, something that I was thinking about doing, but I, I checked and I'm like, oh, my Hawaiian shirts are from like the 2000s. And I'm not sure if uh, they're going to quite fit me. I might, I might have to lose a few pounds, buddy, before I come up and see you. But either way, uh, we have a lot of great stuff to talk about, Chris, because uh, it's contest season. And contest season means it's Las Vegas Chris season. And uh, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners a little bit about the contests and your impeccable records? Well, I, I, I've been very fortunate enough to have uh, pretty regular success over the last uh, decade plus uh, in cashing a, a lot of these contests. Uh, uh, I think the first major contests uh, were back in uh, 2011, uh, won the Palms pigskin, won uh, the win eliminator. That was a one winner only. Um, I've finished first and second uh, in Golden Nugget. Uh, 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 their, their, uh, weekly, uh, tournament, um, uh, for season long, uh, last man standing college, uh, won that one uh, a few years ago, knocked out the final week of the season, uh, several times on the NFL last man standing, uh, last two years, circa, uh, two years ago, finished 20th and 31st out of 18, uh, 75 and last year had great success finishing second and fifth uh, with my only two entries. That is just amazing. And fortunate enough to have a uh, combined winning percentage of 64% with all my entries. So I'm getting very lucky and uh, um, good fortune uh, has shown its light on me. So uh, just uh, hoping to, it's, it's not all luck. You have to put yourself in a position of luck, but um, it, it's, uh, it's been fun and I know I have to work twice as hard just to hopefully do just a little bit worse. So, well, your reputation is impeccable, Chris, and hopefully some of this will rub off on us viewers, listeners, and me, the host, of course. And, uh, did you say, a, did you mention a college contest in there? Uh, who's tipping you off? Oh, if, well, you know, it's only 12 weeks long, so uh, but, <laughs> see, I go, I seem to do well in college every other year. So last year I was 50-50. I think I lost uh, juice. So I'm due to have a good year in college this year again. So uh, oh, there you it's go. very inconsistent. Sometimes some years I have a good year, and but last man standing is just picking one game. Uh, so that, that's a little bit of a different game uh, than picking five games with the Circa Millions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is. Yeah, picking one game a week is certainly different. And is the last man standing like a survivor format or is it ATS? Last man standings are on the half points, one game per week. So uh, the last time we got knocked out on the final week of NFL – was the Thanksgiving game Washington and Dallas a few years ago when Washington botched the extra point and lost by eight instead of seven. So mm -hmm. that's how we uh, didn't get the 100,000 there. Um, so a little frustrating, a little frustrating. Yeah, for sure. I bet, man. Well, great stuff here. I haven't played that one. But why don't you tell our listeners 
about some of the contests that are in Las Vegas and obviously mention which ones are the two, I guess, main ones that people like to get in. Well, the, the, the last man standing is at Stations Casinos, uh, and that's that's a cheap one. I mean, if you're not doing that one and you're in town, I, I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, it's $25 to enter. You buy four entries, you get one free, and, and it's really simple. Pick one game a week mm -hmm. until everybody's uh, gone. So uh, they have one for college, which has a $100,000 guarantee, and one for NFL, which has $150,000. Uh, guarantee. So I always do that and usually uh, somehow do okay in that. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, we do okay on those. Uh, aside from that, we've got the Golden Nugget Contest this year. Uh, that is a $1,000 entry and that has a different format because it combines the NCAA with the NFL. So you can use any combination of seven NCAA NFL. Uh, that one is a little bit favored toward people that are good in college, obviously. Uh, I think for people that are good in college, more people are good in college than in NFL. So oh, yeah. uh, it, it doesn't matter how good you're doing in NFL. I, th I think you're going to be at a real deficit if you're going to try to just do NFL. So you've got to either be both good at both or, or college to win that. Uh, and uh, but uh, uh, that's a pretty simple format. I, I I'm not sure what the payout is. Uh, I I think they might be paying the top ten prizes places, and it's a hundred percent return, and you can play on the app. You don't have to go downtown. So uh, and the people down there are very friendly. So uh, that's always a good contest to play. Yeah, a guy like me would definitely uh, put more college plays out on there just because that's been my stronger suit over the last six to seven years at least. Of course, there's been a, a, maybe one or two of those years. The last maybe six, seven, eight years, I probably did better in the NFL. But just in general, in college, I'm better, uh, maybe because I pay attention to it a lot. Maybe it's because I'm such a big college football fan. So I definitely see what you say there. If you have an advantage in college, you might want to go that. But I can just think about a guy like you, that's 64% over those years on the NFL. I'd be almost using all my NFL picks if I was getting in the gold nugget, uh, for the most part, anyway. Well, 64% is not good enough to win the Golden Nugget, I don't think. It, uh, I, I think I've seen 71% uh, hit that, although I think the last time it was lower, like 66 or 67. But uh, you're going to have to do college. As I've considered taking, uh, if I do it, maybe take a partner uh, and, 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 and possibly do that. But it, it's difficult. It's, uh, I, I just don't know what to do there. Oh, makes sense. Well, let's talk a little bit about the main NFL contest then. What are the two big ones in Las Vegas for any listeners that don't know? Well, the Super Contest uh, is going to draw a lot more people this year than uh, the last time out. Uh, COVID kind of mucked up their program the last time. Uh, traditionally, they were 1,500 in entry. Uh, they've changed it down to 1,000. And uh, they have also added, I believe, six mini contests. Uh, I think, uh, or maybe it's nine mini contests where they're doing six three-week contests and three six-week contests that also kind of pay nicely. Um, and most important, they stop taking a rake out. So it's 100% pay, uh, payback. So I anticipate uh, them getting a nice uh, amount of people in. Uh, and uh, I haven't competed in the uh, Super Contest in years because they were taking 6 or 8% out. And, you know, why, why be a part of that? that? That's just too much to be taking out. It's not poker. Mm -hmm. So makes the expected value lower for sure, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. So they just, just don't want to be a part of any anybody that's taking money out of contests. There's just uh, no reason to get it to support them. And so just happy that they're back in the in the mix of it and uh, happy I don't have to drive down to put the picks in. They also have the Super Contest Gold, which is a $5,000 entry. And that only has one winner. So I'm not a big fan of, uh, of that 
format of pick five every week, one winner. I, I think even for that amount, I think they should have changed it to three because uh, you, you can just bru get brutalized down there at the end. And uh, I would prefer a different uh, flexibility uh, of, of picks rather than a, a fixed five per week uh, for, for that format. You could be that guy that takes second every single year, right? Yeah, and I think they just they could restructure it. But nevertheless, that's a quality contest. And if you're looking at the consensus plays, each of these contests released their consensus plays of what everybody's picking. And over the years, the consensus for the regular super contest, eh, it's, it's okay. But the, the gold is at a, at, a, at a higher level where you could just look at what the consensus is at the uh, for the gold contest and just play those every week. If you've got if you don't have anything to play, just run with that. They, they did those actually do pretty well. There you go. I mean, sharper plays, in my opinion, you know, the less people hire money, people care about money. So, um, you know, they're going to be more invested in it. So that makes total sense to me. Chris, another thing I noticed, uh, Westgate, and I'm not sure if they did it last year because I left the Super Contest for the same reasons you did, went to Circa last year. I, I'm seeing a $1,000 buy-in. I, I thought I remember a $1,500 buy-in. Um, yep. So, they, yeah, they lowered the buy-in to 1000 which is, is going to definitely help them. And it's, uh, I'm sure, you know, maybe Circa probably wasn't happy about that. So, uh, uh, but who knows? Competition is just awesome. It keeps everybody sharp. And uh uh, the two uh, big remaining contests are obviously at Circa. They've got the Circa Millions, which is a pretty simple format, five games per week, $1,000 to get in. Uh, they've got a minimum guarantee of $4 million. Uh, they pay four quarterly prizes of somewhere around $180,000. Uh, and then they pay a booby prize for last place and, and some – quarter prizes for best and, and worst for certain periods of time, but uh, pretty good. And they pay a lot of places. So they, if you can't win it, you've got a lot of opportunity to, to, to back into some various uh, selections there. Um, but uh, you're limited to those five uh, per week. They've got the uh, survivor, which was certainly the most popular last year. They have a $6 million guarantee on that. Uh, and that one's going to be close to an overlay, possibly. It's it's actually trailing in entries currently, but we're way too early to, to make that call. Uh, but uh, you can have up to six entries in that. So the entries can accumulate fast uh, if people start buying six and six and six. But uh, that's a one-winner format. We use one team per uh, season. And Thanksgiving is an extra week. And if I'm not mistaken, maybe Christmas is an extra week so that there's an even 20 weeks. And there may even be some uh, super bonus, I think, of another million or something uh, for uh, if you can make it through all 20 weeks. Uh, hmm. I'm, I can't remember that one. But I didn't play the Survivor last year. I wish I had. I didn't know everybody was going to go out first week. So, <laughs> But... <laughs> The important, thing to, the important thing to remember, though, is if anybody is playing these el private eliminator contests at home or survivor contest, don't enter it if you're going to just do this, bet what everybody else bets. You, you can't win. You know, yeah. yeah, you can share, but you can't win. And you really have to try to think outside the box and uh, – comfortably be willing to take risks along the way because at some point the math dictates you have to make choices that are painful that are going to put your uh, your entry uh, in jeopardy but you you don't go into these contests just following the herd be your own person do different things don't take those 17 point favorites uh because too many other people are, and you want those to go down. And we saw that uh, with the the Rams and the Jets uh, hmm. last season. So, I was hoping you'd bring that up because that was about two. And well, I had actually put on Twitter the week before it was Seattle and the Jets. And I pointed out to people, I had a lot of people contacting me last year, you know, for advice and stuff. And I told everybody, don't take Seattle. 
That's the lag. Let everybody else take Seattle. Why, why would you want to advance with all those people? Because if they get knocked out, you have gained so much equity. If 80% of the people are knocked out or 90% of the people are knocked out, you're getting 10, you know, 10 to one odds uh, increased on your, on your, on what your equity is. So, and it didn't work that week with Seattle, but the very next week against the Rams, sure enough, Rams lost. So uh, just a week early on that advice. Well, one of my contest plays was week one playing uh, Jacksonville against the spread under the, uh, against the Colts. And just because their record at home was so impeccable against the Colts the last five years is something you look at. It's not everything, but it's just part of the handicap. Of course, it's the first week. Not a lot of information, a lot of guessing game coming on. But apparently, the Colts to beat Jacksonville on the road was one of the biggest survivor plays out there. And that's what killed everything. And that's probably why me and you were both like, well, I wish we had more entries in some of these. And what I've always thought about Survivor is unless you're playing almost the max amount, you're really at a disadvantage, you know? I don't know how true that is, but – and I haven't done math on it, but it's just much easier to have much – to have more outs towards the end of the season, isn't there? You know what? It's – it's uh... – it, it can get pretty complicated. There's a there's a lot of moving parts in Survivor and Eliminator contests. Um, and, and just thinking, this just popped into my head uh, for people playing at home with private contests and stuff. It's extremely important to make sure you know all the rules. And I mean all the rules. Uh, you know, I found rules that in Circa that were changed this year because I found rules that should be changed. Uh, and you're going to find, especially in these home games, you want everything thought of ahead of time. You want to know what the time deadlines are. You want to know what the chain of uh, the information is. And if the person is running the pool, you know, is there an advantage for them to know everybody else's picks ahead? you know, of them selecting the picks. How is the honor system monitored? Because, you know, if the, if the people running a, a major pool uh, aren't accountable in some other way and monitored, the people running that pool could be playing by the rules but have a huge advantage knowing what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. So it's something to remember and consider when entering those private contests. But getting back to what we were talking about, there's a lot of moving parts in, in, in these eliminators. And you might have team play. You might be facing people that could be part of 40 entries. You might have, uh, you know, each person can get six and maybe you can only afford one. Um, that really limits your options. Uh, you have to consider all these factors going in and, and all the more reason why you have to be different because anything mainstream and regular and, and predictable is going to be covered by many, many, many other people. So yeah. um, if anything, I, 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 you know, be willing to go out early. I mean, that's the best piece of advice that I can, I can offer is it, it's a lot better to be, sitting pretty at the end of those with lots of options than to be limited at the end with the same thing that everybody else saved. So no, I, I agree 100 percent It's it's a situation, you know. I mean, if you're not as invested as other people and there's only limited options for you, you are a massive disadvantage. So it's very strategic to go through this whole thinking process and how you want to develop your plan to uh, attack this uh, uh, this contest, right? And it's different. You, you have to expect that you're just trying to get yourself an advantage over people going out sometimes more than just picking the best game, right? There, there were several times last year that the game was absolutely irrelevant. And an example, the Thanksgiving game, you had Washington and Dallas. You're talking about a two-point favorite, which is basically, you know, close enough to even money, close enough to a coin flip. Uh, so that doesn't matter. Um, but what you knew for sure was that Dallas was going to get 75 to 80% of the picks in that game. So 
no matter what, you had all the games are coin flips. You have to take Washington because you're getting three or four to one equity increase if you move on. And if you're just riding the herd with Dallas, well, you just moved on with 80% of the people. You know, your equity barely went up. So from a first, from a survivor standpoint or yeah. from against the spread standpoint or both really not well not, not it didn't have, no against the spread it didn't matter but uh, it, you're always looking to gain equity in those survivor pools and okay. you're, you you want to evaluate what other people are going to be on and and try to stomach being on the other side of those games or avoiding those games yeah, Thanksgiving week was quite difficult because you had to make a play. I think there were only two games. games. Yeah, yeah. And, and and that's that that's a little bit of a turnoff, in my opinion. It just puts more variance into um, what could happen rather than just making it on your decision making. It brings more luck into it. So, um, wonder if that's going to change this year. No, that's they're, they're doing the same. They've got the same Thanksgiving week and added a Christmas week, I believe. Okay, well, if that's the case, then I definitely stand by my statement earlier about having more outs and having more entries. If you don't want to spend five, six grand on six entries, maybe that contest is too big for you. Maybe you go to a private contest that's a hundred bucks a piece, you know? It's, and it's really important that whatever contest that you do, you, you can afford it. I mean, you really need it to be screw you money. You, you need to... Uh, um, considered it an expense it's already mm -hmm. spent because Absolutely. You, can't, you can't be sitting there worrying about oh i don't want to go out you know i got all this money invested in it i've got this equity into it i don't want to you know uh i don't want to go out on jacksonville or something you just can't you, you have to just not even think about it and just play the game without having any of the money concerns that's what i tell everybody that just goes to vegas in general to have fun i say you bring a bill you kiss it goodbye say this is five grand whatever you want this is what I'm going to lose on this trip. Anything more than zero, if I bring back, I'm going to look at it as a win because I had a great time. Well, and I'm going to I'm going to strongly disagree because the the last comment I'm ever going to make, and what I always tell people is, if you are coming with the attitude of I've got five thousand dollars to lose, just take that Uber right back to your house, okay? Because you've got the wrong attitude. If you're actually using that mental terminology in your brain that I've got this money to lose, you're already predispositioned to blow it. My so, friends, and I was more talking about people going to Vegas to have fun more or less than an investment opportunity. No, and it's, and it's a matter of positioning it in your way of thought because if you tell yourself, I've, I, I've got this much to lose, you're actually validating it and encouraging it and and you're going to be a little bit more reckless because you've already filed away it away as a loss you it, it, that's how the subconscious works you're 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 enforcing a losing mentality and you have to position it to i have five thousand dollars to play with you know you have to change the wording in your thought process and your thinking you never say i have this to lose no because you're going to lose it Okay. And, and I, to be honest with you, that's how you would approach when you play the games for sure. Anybody that can't afford to lose money is probably what I was trying to make an example of. Shouldn't be gambling on less than 50% expected value situations like craps, blackjack, and things like that. And that's, that's the situation is what I was talking about. But I think yeah. oh, no, I know it's, it's, it's a small little slip up and that nearly everybody uses and I nitpick it because I, I'm, a, I'm a real mental attitude type of guy and subconscious and habit type person. And it, it, and, and, and it, your mental outlook changes the way you reprogram your thinking to be. So Great if you stuff. keep having this lose, lose, lose word in, in the back of your head, you're going to do it. You're going to. Yeah. Don't get in these contests thinking you're going to lose. Get in these contests doing everything that you can to win. And I think that's a, a great point, Chris, and very well said. Getting back into the Circa and the Westgate Super Contest, obviously, you know, people like me that's been following the Westgate for so long looked at the Westgate just like everybody else's in the past as the gold standard, the uh, this is what makes you the champion of sports betting in the NFL. Now the Circa comes in. 
and it's much better. There's no rake. And I looked at it and I switched, you know, I switched. The question that I have, and this is very general question, it's probably rhetorical. What do people look at now as the most prestigious contest? Like uh, if you're a radio host, who would you rather introduce? The winner of the super contest, the winner of the circa? Uh, what, what do you think is, is looked at as, uh, I guess, the better win? You know what? I think it's it's along the lines of when you've got two great teams uh, and both have shown a little bit of uh, spunk and you don't really know how it's going to play out. Right now, uh, it looks like... Uh, uh, you know, Circa has the edge because they're offering the huge guarantees. So, I mean, by default, they, you know, they're guaranteeing the most amount of money. The Super Contest has a long history and a tradition, and uh, it's respected. So uh, you have to respect that also. And they showed their spunk, and, and they're not rolling over, and, and, and they don't want to see Circa take that away from them. And... Uh, if, however, this year pans out, if it doesn't pan out the, you know, the way the Westgate wanted it to, maybe they'll change it again next year. So yeah, very true, very true. And so I, I actually personally think that the circuit kind of caught up. I think it doesn't matter. I think you mentioned one of them. They're it, it, the circuit rivals it is what I'm trying to say now. Yeah. Uh, for that, and especially having the new lavish hotel. Uh, with a, a big stadium swim type situation that they've been advertising, uh, a huge sports book uh, has done wonders for them. And they have some good partnerships, obviously, as well in Las Vegas. So either one, pick your poison. I'm glad the Westgate stepped up because it would make me think twice if I decide to go into that one as well this year. But I'm pretty sure I'll at least be doing an entry into the Circa. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about some of your strategies without giving up too much information? Um, you had two, I believe, entries in the circle last year. You took second and you took fifth. <laughs> you know, I, I can't even imagine how that's possible. Like, if I had two entries, I almost like just envision it as maybe I'm going way different every single week. But I guess if you start hot, you might be able to start mimicking each, uh, each play. And you did ask me a question on text of, uh, about how many times that your plays did match up. And that one had made me scratch my head for a while. So could you talk a little bit about strategy with having multiple entries in the Circa? Well, there's a lot of people that get two or three entries. Three is the max on the millions. And I noticed so many of them had the same five every week. And sure, I can make a case for if you're there at the end, that gives you a little bit of maneuvering room. But, you know, if you've got three of them and you're you're putting all three of them the same, that's what I wasn't understanding with the handful of people that had three. And uh, because you've got these mini contests, you could separate and actually do better uh, with one of them. Uh, it, it's, it just... It, it, to me, it didn't make a lot of sense. I understand why they do it, but to me, I, I, I've always played them separately. This last year, uh, the one that finished in fifth was actually in the 2800s. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the one that finished second didn't have a losing week until week 12. It only had one losing week the whole year. Uh, but the other one was a mess. It started off one and four. It had another one and four along the way. Uh, and I used, um, you know, between the two years, I've only matched one ticket each year. So out of the 17 weeks, only one ticket is matched. And then 50% uh, of the weeks uh, have three or fewer matches. So uh, I'm only matching 65% of, of the plays. Uh, so 35%, it, it's, it's, it's making me select almost seven games per week. Uh, it's a, like 6.6 .6, uh, plays per week I'm having to select at that rate. So, But it allows me to do different things. And I did win the second, or the, uh, second place for the last quarter with the one that I had to do crazy stuff and take risks to make a big comeback. So 
you know, it's an example. If you're doing two different entries, hey, you can, you can catch lightning in a bottle with one of those quarterly prizes. Yeah, absolutely. And I noticed that for me, when I've been in the contest, the last two years, I was closer to the 50%, which was pretty, eh, I wouldn't say out of it, but by week 9, 10, week 11, I had to switch it up a little bit and go a little bit against the grain and maybe take different plays than some of the sharper consensus, you know, and that was my strategy. And it, it made me finish probably around 50%. And maybe someday in the future, it won't. But I think that's similar to what you did with your second one to bring it all the way up to fifth, right? You, you thought out of the box a little bit and went a little bit different because truly, if you have 10 to 13 games going on, depending on bye weeks, um, you can still be right 10 times. <laughs> Right on yeah. ten against the spread picks. So I I, I, th I thought that was a very interesting thing to bring up. Well, and, and it comes. There's a fair amount of weeks that you you're you're you feel uh, I don't know about this week. So there's a case to be made for wanting to have that spread out and saying I don't want this team on two tickets instead of I want this team on two tickets. So. Uh, sometimes it's a defensive posture also, but, uh, you know, almost the same advice applies to millions as survivor. It, you don't want to be following the herd. It's, it's not as crucial in the millions. Uh, it's okay to match on some of them. Um, you don't have to be different on everything. Uh, but if you're going to be following line moves, a lot of other people follow those line moves. Uh, uh, you're not going to gain ground. You're not going to separate from the pack if you're doing what other people are doing. But having to select five games, you're not going to be able to avoid doing what other people are doing. But you just have to make it part of your thought process to be different so that you can make gains. And the inverse would apply if you somehow had a big lead. You know, if you had a big lead, well, now you want to find those games that are going to attract people. Now you want to consider those line move games. Uh, uh, and kind of play a little bit of defense. Uh, so, uh, and the strategy changes depending on, you know, what point of the season it is and whether you're behind or ahead. Great stuff. Great stuff. Makes total sense what position you were on to decide to which picks you're going to play depending upon the betting consensus. Love it, Chris. Great stuff. What other strategies could you give our listeners that you incorporate to some of your plays? Well, one of one of the things that I do that I think is good is I just wait to select. I try not to, I, I try to just absorb as much information as I can throughout the course of the week. And and I mean, there's always going to be a couple of games I know I'm going to be on. Um, as far as contests go, I, I I wait to the last minute and I try to just absorb as much information as possible. And I don't worry about what I'm going to select. Why, why am I going to worry about what I'm going to select before I have to? The, the injury situation is a nightmare. It, it, if you're not paying attention to injuries and you're surprised by them, well, you're not going to stand much of a chance. You've got to find a way to keep up on this stuff. And it, it's without exception every week you're waiting uh, until Saturday mornings for that information. So why even bother thinking about it before then? When is the last minute for some of these contests? I, the deadline for Circa is 3 o'clock Pacific. And uh, uh, I should mention, you don't have to be a Vegas resident or a Nevada resident. Uh, you just need to fly in and sign up, and you can have proxies submit your picks uh, for you. So uh, Correct. Um, you're not excluded. And uh, for the people that don't know the answer to this, uh, um, the reason why none of these contests are in multiple states at the same time is because each state has their own regulations and uh, they're all different. Every state has different rules, regulations, uh, approvals uh, and such. And, and even though Circa is in multiple states and uh, Westgate's and Super Contest is, uh, Superbook is in multiple states, they can't combine them. So there's the quick answer why they don't do that. Oh, great stuff. We spent a lot of time on this, so I'm just going to get to the last question. Does fading the public in the past, it's been somewhat of a successful thing not to do just from a sports betting in the NFL perspective, 
but also in these contests, is fading the public just in general still a viable option for success? Well, it's, it's, since we're on contests, I'll answer from the contest viewpoint. I'd ha I have a different answer when we talk about NFL betting. But in the contest, yeah, you damn well better be figuring out what you think other people are going to select and either decide that you're okay with that or intentionally avoid those. So uh, I definitely am spending time figuring out what the herd is going to be on. And it doesn't mean I have to avoid all those games. I just need to know how that's going to affect my plays and, and is that what I want to do and um, yeah, do I have any options? Right, right. So basically doing that in general is not going to make you a winner is, what, is probably the answer that I would say. I think I heard that fading the public only gets you around the 50 to 53 percent, at least when it comes to last year's numbers. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, I think the public might have been might have become a little bit more educated just because the the freedom of information and how easy it is to get information and how people are learning more about sports betting. Well, these contests cost more, so the general person is going to take it a little bit more seriously than in the past. Back in the day, when they used to have these hundred dollar contests and such uh, for Leroy's and some of these other places, there used to be a system where you would enter everybody's because they didn't used to give you these consensus. Uh, people used to manually do it and it used to be a great play to fade them because back in those days they were awful. So it, it, it paid to do the work to find out who the entire, what every entry is on and total it up and just fade those top five. And that mm -hmm. was a huge winning system for a long time. And that's not the case anymore. Uh, people just take it too seriously. They have too much invested in it. Uh, and uh, there's a fair amount of parity. So. Absolutely. So just to end it, the Thursday night game, you'd have to have a pretty strong feeling for a game in order to play that. Because once you get that entry and you have to have them all in by then. One thing I do know is Friday's injury report that comes out around maybe one, two, three o'clock Pacific time for all the teams is a key thing for me. Um, so if anybody's making picks on Friday morning, it's a very bad strategy to do that because there's the main injury report gives you the best idea of what's going to happen, even though there's still going to be a lot of questionable. Is that accurate to say? Um. Yeah, for the most part, uh, picking Thursday games during the COVID season was, you, boy, you didn't want to do that. I mean, you just really couldn't. I only did it one time, and I had to because it was my lock of the week, and it was one of the best plays I had had, uh, you know, strongest plays I had up to that point. I'm like, I have no choice. And it's torture because if you lose that game, you have to live with that misery uh, for extra days and you're just glum and 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 you know for a fact Friday and Saturday is going to bring out more injury news or COVID news or weather news and you're just stuck like a pig and <laughs> uh, uh, but if you win that game it certainly feels good going into Sunday I already want to know uh, so it's it just it, you, it, you just have to be you have to be pretty darn sure about your play to, to put it in on a Thursday. And, and hopefully this coming season, we won't have the same COVID issues. So it won't be as uh, much of a, of a barrier. But won't uh, they still be testing for COVID, these players constantly? Because that's the thing that gets me the most because of not only false positives, but people that aren't even sick test positive, right? And we don't know if they would spread it or not. Maybe they would, in theory, they would. But there's a lot of people held out in COVID that weren't even sick. So if they're doing that again, then yes, I think it would be a much bigger concern. Have you heard anything about that? Well, I feel safe about it at this point because we have a long track record. We haven't had any, uh, I mean, we had the Vancouver situation and, and one other team in hockey. But for the most part, we've skated by it pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of NCAA basketball delays, but uh, uh, for the most part, it's been pretty good. And I think the vaccination rate is very high, although we're finding out that the vaccinations may not be working. So that might be something that develops in the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
but I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that it won't cause the same uncertainty and and complete and utter chaos uh, uh, that it, it caused last year. I, I think we'll be better prepared. All right. Well, so am I. And hopefully we're going to have a clean season here to make our decisions a lot easier on us for these huge football contests. Let's transition.